Welcome, and thank you for taking the time to learn more about the Phaser program. We've developed a series of short educational videos about Phaser and pharmacogenomic testing, also referred to as PGX, at the VA. We invite you to view one or more of them to inform the use and application of PGX testing for your practice. In this video, we'll guide you through the sample collection and laboratory methodology used for the Phaser PGX test to provide you with a deeper understanding of how this testing is performed. As you may recall from earlier Phaser provider videos, the Phaser PGX test requires one tube of blood to be sent to the reference laboratory, Sanford Health Imaginetics, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Once your patient's blood sample is received by the reference lab, genetic analysis, laboratory interpretation, and final return of the final PGX test report to the ordering provider happens within about two weeks. A summary version of the results will also be sent to the patient. This review of the testing process is intended to provide a better understanding of test outcomes and limitations of testing. Once the reference lab receives the blood sample, the patient's DNA is isolated and extracted. Following extraction, a method called real-time allele-specific polymerase chain reaction analysis, or PCR, is performed for a specific set of alleles in the genes tested as part of the panel. PCR amplifies the DNA region of interest, or the sequence surrounding the genetic allele of interest. An allele is a version of a gene that's inherited by one parent. A list of the genes and allele variants that are part of the test panel can be found in the test details of the final PGX report. The results will indicate if a reference, for example, no variant identified allele, variant allele, or both are present within any of the genes analyzed as part of a patient's sample. It is important to note that this test is not one that reports the entire sequence of a gene. Instead, the phaser panel only examines specific locations in a gene known to impact the function of the protein encoded by the gene that ultimately influences the drug effects. Some pharmacogenes are more complex than others. For example, CYP2D6 is an example of a pharmacogene that can have different types of variants. CYP2D6 can have a variation in a single base pair within a DNA sequence called single nucleotide polymorphisms and or structural differences called copy number variations. Copy number variations occur when a stretch of DNA is duplicated or in some case tripled or quadrupled. Fortunately, a laboratory method called droplet digital PCR, DDPCR, can be used to estimate copy number variations. For phaser, the DDPCR assay used can accurately calculate up to three duplications. Once the genotyping is performed on a given sample, the raw results are interpreted based on peer-review published guidelines from the Clinical Pharmacogenetics Implementation Consortium. Most pharmacogene results will be assigned a diplotype or combination of alleles from both chromosome strands, for example, one from mom and one from dad. Diplotypes are reported using the STAR nomenclature. This nomenclature is unique to pharmacogenomics and corresponds to the different versions of a gene that have been identified. STAR1, written out as an asterisk symbol followed by the number 1, implies a normal functioning protein where none of the targeted variants were detected. Different versions of pharmacogenes are identified numerically using STAR designations. In some circumstances, a genotype such as AA is used in place of the STAR designation. However, the majority of diplotypes are STAR designations. Phenotype is predicted from an individual's pair of STAR designations, or diplotype, for example, STAR3, STAR4, which a person has for any given pharmacogene. The phenotype refers a prediction of the function of the proteins encoded by the gene of interest. For example, a patient's phenotype for the CYP2D6 gene based on their diplotype can be reduced, normal, or ultra-rapid metabolizer. This phenotype is then used to determine the impact on a specific medication. As with any gene panel test, there are certain limitations that should be considered. These are described on the last page of the patient's PGX report. It's important to note that this test does not detect all variants that impact protein expression and function. 
Thus, it is possible that a rare variant will not be detected because the test isn't designed to look for it, and as a consequence, a false negative result will be reported. Non-genetic factors such as age and medical history or drug-drug and drug-drug gene interactions are not measured by this assay or considered in the laboratory interpretation. Thus, a normal result does not preclude the presence of a genetic variant that is not assessed as part of the assay or other factors that may impact drug response. Error during genotyping, though rare, can also occur for a variety of reasons that may interfere with the performance of the test and other technical errors. After the testing is complete and the report is finalized, any remaining DNA or blood from the patient's sample is destroyed. As research progresses and our PGX knowledge expands, the interpretation of specific pharmacogenomic variants may change to accommodate new information, such as new medications impacted by a gene. With that said, the interpretation on the Phaser PGX report is based on the current understanding of the pharmacogenetic variant that is being analyzed at that time. Like many laboratory diagnostics, this particular PGX panel test has not been approved by the FDA. However, the test is pursuant with Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendment, CLIA laws, and regulations. The test itself is CLIA certified, and the Imaginetics Lab is licensed as a CLIA certified lab, as well as College of American Pathologist, CAP, accredited. Thank you for your time and attention throughout this video. We hope you found this information to be of value to you and your patients. Should you have any questions and or feedback about this video or the Phaser program in general, please refer to our SharePoint website or contact your local site champion.